Hey, 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 welcome back to another exciting week. This is the start of a new week, a new exciting uh, five days of four days of magical year, year magical learning. So I think we are uh, still on the Greek philosopher, um, <laughs> kind of like, uh, you know, yeah, I had, I had a so, philosophy so, kick. <laughs> so uh, we are going to talk about, you know, um, the practicing stoic. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what you we, got, we, Chris? We were in a we were in a a rut um, of uh, 101 essays and and the practicing Stoic and I was in I was in a so I, I, the 101 a, essay didn't scratch the itch. <laughs> apparently not. I I I don't know. I I just kept rocking and rolling with this one and uh, just kept fighting through it. So, um, uh, but yeah, no. The um the book today is um uh. The book, The Practicing Stoic, a Ph Philosophical User's Manual by the author Ward Farnsworth. So this this book actually wasn't really as much about the philosophy of, of stoicism. It was more about like the it's kind of like a practitioner's handbook of like, you know, what it, what does it really mean? Like, what is an externality? Like, what are the what are the words? Of the, like, it was kind of breaking down stoicism a little mm -hmm. bit more than than being more of like a like a Marcus Aurelius's meditations or like. Epictetus's discourses, you know, where it was more like just like an actual philosophical discussion about life in general. This is more of like a practical how-to guide of like, like if we were going to take all those different writings of of the Stoics and like try to break it down into what is happening here. Like that was what this book is really about. Nice. And it, it, it was interesting. It was, um uh you know, I don't, for whatever weird reason, I don't know what it is about Stoicism in particular, but um I don't know. There was something, there's something interesting to me about the philosophy. Like, I don't love it um, to be honest with you. Like, I don't, I don't really agree with stoicism, um, but, but I've, I, I wanted to learn more about it. I don't know why I was, I was like stoic curious, you know, <laughs> like, uh -huh. I mean, uh, um, if, if you will. So I think that's why I've kind of naturally explored that a few different times on this journey. And, and, you know, it is what it is. I learned something, right. So, uh, so this particular reflection title is, um, is, is hi, Soli. Uh, thanks for the visit. And and I'll, I'll explain what, what the hell that means. Who's uh, Soli? <laughs> I'll, I'll explain what that is. Yeah. So, uh, so I started this one off just saying, like, I think I'm, I think I'm finally starting to understand stoicism a little bit. Right. Um, uh, I, I don't know about you, but like when I first think of stoicism or when I first thought of stoicism before I've you know, had read anything or studied it or, or try to explore it a little bit further myself. I always thought of those people that just like had no feelings, basically, you know, no matter what was going on around, they were just stone cold, like, you know, very lifeless, no, no feelings. Um, and as a matter of fact, if you look up the definition of stoicism, like the def how they, how it's defined just in our popular culture and our dictionary, it's the endurance of pain or heart pain or hardship without the discipline of or sorry, the endurance of pain or hardship without the display of feelings and without complaint. So like, when I hear that, I don't know about you, but that just sounds miserable. Like, it just sounds like people that are just like going through shit all day long and they just have no, have no feelings or emotions. Yeah, it reminds me of eating frog for breakfast. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's not fun. It does not, like, there's nothing about. It reminds me of rice grinds and repeat. It reminds it me of, you know, Go and uh, work in a stop mine until you die. Pretty much, yeah. And, and mean, don't show emotions uh, about it. Like just suck it up and you know d deal with life and and you know uh, you know um, premeditated adversity. You know, imagine yourself the worst thing happening to you, so you can you know practice that thought and that feeling every single day before you ever go out there and and um, and actually happens to you and you know how to prepare yourself. You know, like it's it doesn't sound fun is what it doesn't sound is what it sounds like to me. Um, and it doesn't sound like it's a, a, a life well lived either, you know, because like we're humans and we have emotions and like, you know, it's not the emotions aren't bad. Um, and, and I've always had the feeling that, that um, just in pop culture and, 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 you know, what we've, what we hear of stoicism, um, you know, and, and kind of pop culture that, that, that is the kind of the vibe of it is like, you know, to be, emotionless you know um for the most part right um and and endure you know shit <laughs> um and 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 do it without emotions you know um so that's the weird thing is i've explored though stoicism further and further is um I, I don't think that's what it's about at all actually anymore and um uh you know after reading you know like meditations and the practicing stoic and and the daily stoic is the daily reflection book that i read every once in a while and and write a reflection in the mornings off of and 
and the Socrates Express, learning about, um, you know, premeditated adversity. And um, there was another book that, you know, dove into stoicism as well um, uh, that we'll talk about along the journey and uh, that, I, that I've kind of explored. I think I'm finally starting to understand this this philosophy a little bit more. And it's and it's really it isn't about denying emotions. It's actually about embracing emotions and, and recognizing them. Right. So it's about, um, you know, feeling when you feel pain to say, I feel pain, like, and okay, like, what do I want to do with that? You know, it's more similar to the space between stimulus and response is your freedom to choose kind of a philosophy in general. And, um, and, and that space like, isn't about denying that emotions happen. Right. And that space isn't about, you know, you know, changing outcomes afterwards. It's about, it's about that, that time in the middle when you can decide what you want to do with that emotion that you just got, right? It's about just recognizing emotions and then processing it and figuring out what you want to do with it. Um, so that's really what I feel like, like stoicism as the more I studied it and the more that I've learned from it, that, that, that it, it's, it's about like if somebody knocked on your door and it was like an emotion and you know, you, you open it up and you decide, okay, come on in or don't, you know, but it's kind of your decision at that point in time. So with that in mind, um, as I was, as I've been exploring this and thinking about this stuff, I, I recently started to play a little game with myself um, that I, uh, whenever I feel like a certain wave of emotions and, you know, like if I'm getting pissed or if I'm angry at work or if I'm, you know, tired of chasing Luca around and picking up after him and running after him all day long or like, you know, yelling at my wife to put clothes away or something like that. I was like, whenever I feel that emotion coming on, I try to pretend like um, uh, there literally is somebody that that in my mind that knocks on a door and and I I go up and I open it up and I'm and there's a little like a little monster waiting for me outside of it. And um, and the monster that I keep that I keep uh, seeing in my head is is solely from Monsters, Inc. You, you ever see that movie uh, Monsters, Inc. with like solely and Mike Wozniacki and and, you know, you ever, you ever seen Monsters, Inc.? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. OK, so I keep I keep just I don't know why that's the monster that I think <laughs> of when I when I'm thinking of like anger at my door or whatever and he's like you know in a nice soothing john goodman voice he's like hey just you know it's all your anger do you want to you know want me to come on in we can we can figure it out and and i'm and and uh, you know i just say you know at that time i can decide whether or not like hey yeah come on in let's go let's go fuck some shit up or or no i think i'm good like you can i can just close the door we'll see you later next time you you know next time the anger comes and you know, it, and it, and it kind of helped. It, it worked. It, it's, it, it was something that was kind of fun to think about whenever I got angry. Like, you know, just, I just think of like, like John Goodman and, and Soli at my, at my door and, you know, asking me if he wants to, wants to rage or not. And I, and I, and I get to make that decision whether or not I want to go rage or not, you know, and, uh, and let him in. Uh, but either way, I'm acknowledging that emotions there and, and then uh, deciding what I want to do with it. Right. And make, making my space and stimulus to choose. So, I thought I wanted to take that a little bit further. I haven't really tried it yet um, uh, with other emotions like love or, or pain or, or, you know, you know, anger or whatever beyond, beyond just the anger kind of emotion. <laughs> like that's what I, that's what I feel like I've been using this the most. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I guess in theory, you could really apply this to anything like success or failure or anxiety or whatever it may be, you know, you can pretend that it's a new little monster that's knocking at your door and you can decide what you want to do with it. Right um and um uh yeah so that, that that was the reflection from this book and um and just stoicism in general of kind of how i'm starting to think about it because it's not about denying emotions is that i feel like stoicism is actually is about embracing emotions but deciding you know what you want to do with them meeting them at the front door of your life and then in uh you know deciding whether you want to welcome them into your home or not so that's it so uh, mm-hmm. uh lo- love to, love to get your thoughts you know um what, what do you think yeah i think i think you're right i mean um, uh, from your reflection, that is, to me, it's about responding to things that comes to you, versus reacting. Because if if a monster comes, if you react to the monster, then you are not choosing. You didn't have a choice. But if you chooses, then you are in control. Because yeah. it's it so so I, I really agree with the the fact that you say it's like you know between uh, stimulus and and respond is a freedom to choose. So to me, if you if you tell me about stoic and stoic how they use emotions, basically they use logic to put control put emotion into into in check because if 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 you if you if somebody is trying to make you angry right and push the buttons right and normally if you are not a practicing stoic it's not to show that hey 
I've, I can make Chris angry, right? And yeah. and if I if he doesn't show anger, that doesn't mean that he doesn't does. I mean, I think from the surface, when you look at the definition of stoic, you think they are, you know, emotionless, taking shit just right. because, <laughs> right? They're not taking shit. That's I think I think a lot of people will will be mistaken that stoic just take the shit just because they are supposed to for whatever belief they have. And I would have thought of the same, um, you know, the same concept, same image. If you hadn't told me about the the fact that between stimulus and response is freedom to choose, then it, it actually turned my my view on Stoic based on that particular phase alone. Because I think Stoic isn't about taking the shit. It's about okay, shit came. What am I gonna do with it? I get to choose. Exactly. Right. And so so exactly I think I think I think having that lesson here is is great because it you know like I said it, it goes back to many of the concepts that we learned in in previous episodes you know we're talking about between stimulus and response is freedom to choose because we don't want to react to things that comes to us when it comes to us right we need to take it and say right well, this is what I uh, it came to my door this is what's given to me how would I like to respond to it. That's the only thing I can control in life, and I don't want to give that away because right. if that's the only thing I can control, and I'm going to show emotions just because you you press the buttons to make me angry, you press a button to make me sad, right? That means you controlling me. I have no control over myself, and that's right. the only thing that I had. And if I don't, right, then basically I have no freedom at all. And so to me. Understanding what a practicing stoic does and how they really truly do it in in the in the spirit of stoic right stoicism, then to me that makes sense. Um, I think a lot of people mistakes what a stoic does based on the definition alone because I think definition yeah. doesn't it sounds give awful. You, yeah, it, it sounds <laughs> awful. It's like hey, I mean, these people will take shit and they don't even you know <laughs> complain. Yeah. To me. To me, I think I think the the definition of not complaining may threw me off to say, hey, this guy takes shit and doesn't, you know, complain, right? For right. me, it's like, well, I don't have to take shit. Shit comes to me, right? But you know, I can divert that, I can reflect that, or I can, you know, you know, dodge it. But I will complain because right. hey, don't throw shit at me because I'll throw it back. For me, that if, if you had told me that in the beginning, then I would look at, at the Stoic as a different different way. But uh, I think having the, the word that, you know, they don't complain without complaint, I think that, I don't know why that should be in there. I don't think that should be in there. I don't, I don't, I don't either. Like, I mean, the, the thing is, is like, when, 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 like, whatever monster you imagine in your mind, you know, that is reflective of that emotion that you feel mm -hmm, comes mm -hmm. to your door, by all means, you can let it in. If you want to feel love, like, and, and you do, and you want to feel that love, like, let them in. Like, you know, you know what I mean? Um, And, and you want to embrace that moment and like, and feel all the feels like you don't have to deny, like you, you want to, have, you don't have to deny being angry either. You don't have to deny anything. Like, I mean, it's a, if you don't want to, but, yeah, it's, your, I th I but think, it's your choice, you know? Like, I think, I, mean, I think it's the, the, without the display of feelings and complaint, right? Because to me, it's like, I can display an anger, but I can control my response to my anger. Say I am angry inside, but I'm right. not going to take a bat and swing at your face. <laughs> right. Right. And, unless you unless you want to. <laughs> unless you want unless you decide that's what you want to. Right. But you 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 were responding versus reacting, right? Reacting is exactly. like whatever whatever it is, it just bounced back, right? And so so to me, the definition may threw me off of the real concept of stoic. You, I mean, I agree. To, to me, I think if you give me a definition alone without giving the context, I would always believe how people are supposed to be taking shit because, you know, it's whatever. Why? We, uh, yeah, whatever why? belief, whatever, <laughs> you know, silly belief that you, you think, you know, it's going to give you a, a benefit of whatever sort is to let people 
throw shit at you all the time. One hundred percent. But like, if, if, if you if you if you told me about the real reason why they do it, it's it's it more it's more understandable and it gives us a lot of benefit because we don't want to lose the control, the only control that we have. And think about it: if we can control how we respond to things, then the benefit that comes to us is going to be much more than we just reacting to external stimuli. Because if somebody you know throws shit at you, you throw shit back. Well, eventually everybody's going to get shitty. <laughs> exactly. This is a, like I'm just looking up more definitions. If you can see it on here, it says you know being stoic is like a, a just you know just looking up what what is a stoic person like. Being stoic is being calm and without any emotion. I don't think that's true. No, this no, is what it's, I'm not, saying. It's, it's, like, it's not without it's, emotion. It's no, not without it's expected emotion. It's just processing emotion. the emotion. No, it, because the... I, I could be happy when when you tell when you're trying to make me angry because you say, "Hey, true, you're an ugly, you know, ugly uh, dude. Hey, uh, you're a short dude." I say, "Well, okay, thank you. Right. I, I like it. It's a compliment, right? That is an emotion. It's an emotion of you know, hey, you know, that's cool because you know that's what I thought too, right?" That's still an emotion to me to say without emotion to me that kind of threw me off of the definition because the emotion, the expected emotion, if I were to punch you in the face, I expect you to get mad, right? Right. Because if 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 you if you punch me in the face, I could be happy because you know, hey, I could get a lot of money from you. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I can say, hey, I can I can just sue you for uh uh for assault. <laughs> I can get you a lot of money from you. I could be happy. That's right. that's still an emotion, but it's opposite of what I expected. So right. to me, a, if if you if if a stoic is to do that, then I'm all for stoics. They're they're not emotionless people. Like I mean, that's the point. It's like I mean, like even right here it says the noun stoic is somebody who's not very emotional. I it, it describes the adjective describes a person or action or thing that seems emotionless or almost blank. I could not disagree more with that. This is what I'm saying in popular culture. The word stoicism, I think. Is, is synonymous with somebody that has no emotions. Right? So who wrote and, these things? I, I, wrote? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I mean, and and this is this is what I struggled with when I would when I would study stoicism and and when I would learn more about it and I would read because it that like, would like, just put that would put me off. I would not read uh, this yeah, book. We're, we're still would... we're still humans. We still have emotions. Like I mean, it's not like you can deny you know that 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 the monster walked to the but door. But to you deny know? your emotion, it's it's like. You know, not using half of your your gifts. I, I mean... agree. I mean, there, there's a reason why we have the emotions. You know, like I mean, they're not. They're not they're, emotions aren't the enemy. Like they're they're they're. I they're, mean, you should su- you suppressing you suppressing it, right? To me, right. that isn't natural. Isn't right. So for me, if I'm looking at a book and I go and Google what is a stoic, I would never have read this book. I just it would put I me off because like, I, I don't want to be emotionless. I, I to be to be fair is is um uh it's not that I didn't necessarily learn it from this book. This has kind of been like just my 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 burgeoning like you know mm-hmm. understanding of of stoicism that that caused the reflection. But but you you see it in the description. He says the foundational idea of stoicism is that we appear to go through life reacting directly to events. The appearance is an illusion. We react to our judgments and our opinions to those thoughts about things and not about the things themselves. Stoics seek to become more conscious of those judgments and find a rationality in them and then choose them more carefully, right? Like, right. what do I want to do? That you sounds know? more yeah. like a stoic definition versus the definition on Google. Emotionless and, you know, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. And, like, it's, when, when you look at it the way that we're talking about it, like, I don't mind stoicism at all because I think it's actually a really good practice of, of you know, like it's hard to recognize when you're having emotions. You know what I mean? Like I, I think I think very for most of us, when we have an emotion, and immediately the reaction just immediately happens, right? And like and, and but I think but I think also the thing is you don't have you don't have to not react to it. You can you can shorten it because if I make you angry, right? You could probably make me angry for five minutes, ten minutes, an hour a day, but not whole lifetime i've seen people hold a grudge for a whole lifetime right yeah, no, that's and so so so, like, so to I, me to me that is that is burning on you I not agree. the other person the other person say hey i didn't know i made you mad <laughs> uh, <laughs> i would go through life joyfully i'm skipping i'm skipping <laughs> skipping down the you know whatever right i'm skipping through life like like you know one happy joyous life and you're here like Grudging me for something I did that I didn't even know is it's burden on you, not the guy that did you wrong. So for me, a stoic, right? 
<laughs> it's it's uh there's a saying um uh, re resentment is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die like or like or, or um uh you know um uh, uh like revenge or whatever it may be you know it, to, to your point it's like when you're angry at somebody else for the for your entire life it's like hey i'm gonna drink this poison of anger all day long and and but you're gonna die, you know. You know. But, but that's no. the thing is, a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times, what we do is, you know, when we, let's say, we're mad at somebody, right? You self sabotage yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to um, yeah, to make the other person feel bad for some reason. Right. And, and sometimes, you know, that's that's the habit that we've been conditioned to follow. It it sounds so silly. You know, it's like, hey, you know, when when I'm mad at my wife, right? You know, I I I, I forget to eat, right. <laughs> and I starve myself, and you know, look like I'm <laughs> I'm a homeless guy, or whatever. I'm just punishing myself. <laughs> she doesn't even know. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's it's very true. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, I mean, they're you, you know, know what I mean? Because yeah. I've done I've done that in the past, and and I've seen I I see I see myself doing that. Too. That's that's just that's just, stupid. You drink it's like drinking poison for yourself, you know, and open the other person's eyes. It's um, like I'm suffering for the for however long that I'm mad at her. <laughs> you're the only one suffering too. I mean, like I'm sure she doesn't give a shit at a certain point in time. She's but like, what's I'm this saying problem? is, once you practice a stoic, you can. I mean, it's better to um, check your emotion at the door and say, "Hey, Sully, you know, thanks for visiting." Uh, or you can decide then, but if, if he came in, you can always ask him to leave. So exactly. last time, last time, like if, if you're mad at somebody, right? You can always shorten your your, uh, I guess your your pain of, of whatever it is you're trying to put yourself off. Or, or your happiness too. Like to be fair, like so, like my uh, my cousin, um, I'm teaching her tennis these days, and uh, um, I have a rule that I give her because I mean this is something I've been working really hard on for the past you know, a few years in this journey as well is, is to, to not worry about the outcomes, right? Good or bad. So if you hit a great shot and you feel that mo that rush of momentum and you're like, you're gaining momentum. I'm like, I've, I've been telling her you get five seconds. It's good to feel good about that. Like you hit a great shot and it, it you know, it, tell your elephant, great job. That was impressive. Be like, go like, man, elephant, like, that's great. I mean, I literally tell her this stuff. I'm like, man, tell your elephant, like, that was amazing. Like, you know, be really impressed with yourself, but then five seconds later, forget it. And then, and then remember why you're playing tennis in the first place and go and go do it. And then vice versa, same thing. Um, it's just, it's, I call it. It's, my it's about rule. control. It's about controlling what you want because right. the thing is, you need to decide right what you want to do. Because if you're talking about Sully coming to your room, right when he comes to your room, things gonna happen. Whatever it right. is, you can decide whether you let him in at the door or you let him in and ask him to leave because you still are in control. You are telling him this is my decision. But if you don't practice the Stoics, right? You letting emotion do whatever he do until he decides to leave. Exactly. Not you, right? And that's the lesson that I see that I'm learning today is that you have that control, and you need to take the ownership of that and don't let go of it. Because if you do, then people will control you by 100%. pushing whatever buttons to make you yeah. happy. It doesn't even have to be people. It can be circumstances. It, circumstances. it could just be. It, it could be anything. That, like if you if you constantly get into the into the to the roller coaster of emotions, you know, like like that's what going back to the tennis example. Like it's such an emotional roller coaster in the course of a match. You can feel really great and feel like you're on this 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 amazing upward trajectory, and then all of a sudden you come crashing back down. Then find yourself three games later talking to yourself, telling you're the worst player ever. And like, you know, it's just a downward shit spiral. Like when you constantly ride the roller coaster. But wave, you think about like, it, you, you, you know, you're if just... you're not in control, you can't make good decisions. And that's, I, that's, that's, a, that's the point. Yeah. That's you giving away good, smart actions to, you know, other people, you know, exactly. you, you just giving it away. You don't control anything because you can't control. It's totally like knocking your door and you don't control when he leaves. And that yeah. to me is a problem. But the thing is, you say, "Well, this is my room. I can ask you to leave whatever I want." Mm -hmm. And that is the big lesson that I've got today from this reflection title. Thank you for that. I think I think that's it's a good reminder of the uh, you know between stimulus and response. Uh, you know, yeah, the, the you have the action, the um, the freedom to choose. Yeah, and I, I think love it. I think to me is very important because I think. It's a domino effect. It's a cascade of things because if you are in a bad mood, you're in an angry mood, 
you will not make good judgments and whether or not you will want to go and beat somebody with a with a with a baseball bat or whatever right, right. I, i guarantee you it's not a good decisions you're going to regret right. those decisions and you know having your your control of your your freedom to choose allow you to optimize those opportunities and the decisions you make because you don't want to make decisions you regret I um I, I I agree. This is a fun, this was a fun one for me personally. I really like this one just like because it it is a I think it's the visualization for me of just the, seeing you know Monsters Inc. guy at my door and and mm -hmm. uh, you know it, it's easy for me to like remember that you know it's like it's like uh, Moonwalk it's a memory palace. Yes, yeah, exactly. of course. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, versus like you know stoicism. The idea of stoicism isn't you know that like you know in, in pop culture, right? The sto the idea of stoicism when I see. The visualize a visualization that I had in my head of stoicism was just an emotionless dead person, you know, like, I mean, and that's not what it is. Um, so I, I'm glad that this, like, I'm glad that this, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you were able to uncover the, the, the layers of, you know, incorrectness of what stoicism is because otherwise well, to, my, to me at least i mean i, I mean, mean I guess, to me yeah. too you you i mean i don't know about stoic until you until we talk about today but right. i'm looking up on google based on what i'm reading google i would not touch this story i know it's so, it right? sounds awful <laughs> but but the thing is because you have read it and you have gone through the first layer of this right. this incorrectness right you found the true meaning of it is and i said well i think you know people got it wrong on the surface whoever wrote the definitions probably translate wrong or did not read the book and they just translate they just you know took wrote a wild it. ass guess yeah they, wild you know, ass guess to what a stoic is and right. and we suffer for because we took somebody's um word without questioning <laughs> and is it you know is it really Uh, or it's really it's really understanding yourself right you know like because it's 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 more of an understanding issue than it is a um you know but that's the like, thing uh, as what I, i see a lot of people do is they don't take the time to investigate and form their own opinion they just take somebody else's opinion and pass it on right 100%, right? All, all the time why did, why did that just pop up somebody somebody wants to contact you i know but why did it pop up Did you have um, a um, push notifications? <laughs> no, that, that was that's weird. Uh, anyway, all right. Um, uh, well, that was a fun one. Um, any final thoughts? Yeah, say hi to Sully. <laughs> uh, well, I will say I, 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 like I said, I need I need other monsters in my head to to remember other emotions. So after this, after a year of magical learning reflection, but I think I, I usually, think, I usually I... feel um uh, um satisfied so if there's a satisfied emotion like a little monster knocking on the door i'll be like yeah come on in let's go hang out for a but, while before but i go to bed sully you know? can can represent all emotions he, i mean he can but like i really want sully to be like my anger emotion and then i want to have like a i want to have like a, another well, monster for my go back my... and watch my sink or watch uh <laughs> watch, watch while, inside but... out <laughs> right, right. watch inside out <laughs> I, i would i would love it to be able to like you know for me to go oh yeah Sully's my anger monster like is at the door when i see him you know or like this is my this is my my love monster or my you know my happiness monster or my my you know whatever anyway we'll figure it i'll figure it out in the future i'll keep playing around with it but uh but yeah no i Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, the question we can leave with um, with you all is: Is what creative ways do you deploy to manage your own emotions? So, um, uh, you just know, just read the Stoics. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, yeah, just read, read, read the Stoics. Uh, or read, watch, read, watch read, yeah, yeah. read Stoics or uh, read uh, you know the uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective, effective People. Right, it's, they're saying the same thing. I mean, it's really all about just understanding your emotions and embracing them, and then and then deciding what you want to do with it. Like, and that's that's the best thing you can do. So uh, thanks for joining in and we will see you all tomorrow for book 158. And thanks for, uh, thanks for joining. Yeah. See you. Good night.